welcome and happy St. Patrick's Day. I'm Shannon Penrod, host of Skills Live. And I'm Emily Goodwin, technical director for Skills Live. And today we're just a couple of Irish chicks in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're Irish, aren't you? I am. With a name like Shannon, I have to be Irish. So happy St. Patrick's Day to you. Ah, thank you. Happy St. Patrick's Day to you. Top of the morning to you, right? right. Uh, Evelyn Gould will just... <laughs> be so angry at my fake Irish accent. In any case, we're gonna make some really easy, healthful, and colorful recipes for you to do with your kids in the kitchen today. We're gonna start with an Irish tradition that usually is referred to as cold cannon, that is mashed potatoes, and in Ireland they use kale. Mm -hmm. And you can do kale, I've got some uh, curly leaf kale here, but if you're trying to get your kids to eat some different colors and taste some different things, one of the things that we talk about on Skills Live a lot yes, is that you can grind up food and mix it with a preferred food and do just a little bit and they'll get excited about it. What a wonderful time of year. What I've done is taken some spinach, which is a little more mild than kale. I love kale, but not all kids are going to love kale. So we uh, took some fresh spinach, didn't even steam it, and put it through the food processor and made a little mash here. And we've got some instant mashed potatoes that are all natural. Um, and we, we could start out and add, it takes just very little to turn it green. And what a great excuse to say to the kids, hey, we're gonna have green mashed potatoes. Of course, you could use food coloring, but why not help them to get the taste of spinach rolling around in their mouth and it's got nutrients, iron, and things like that. So Emily is mixing it around. And usually I would probably add the spinach when I'm adding the instant mashed potatoes. And of course, you could do your mashed potatoes from scratch, but I use an all natural organic dehydrated potato that doesn't have anything else in it. And if you need to, you can thin it up with a little bit of chicken stock. In fact, we didn't use any butter or milk to make these, we just used chicken stock. So mm -hmm. you've got some lovely green tinted mashed potatoes here and you can see that the ones that we made over there that are a little bit creamier and I would probably add some chicken stock to this to make it creamier, those are a little greener. Depends on what your kids can handle and if they like spinach already, you could put whole leaves in there and make it green mashed potatoes mm -hmm. or cold cannon, our version. Great. So next what we're going to make is something that in our house we refer to as rainbow meatloaf. You've probably heard of some of the recipes where you grind up vegetables and sneak them into something. Uh, we don't even sneak it at our house. We make it part of the fun that I take Jem to the farmer's market or to the grocery store. And there's no wrong way and there's no right way to do this. You just want to put a rainbow of vegetables into the meatloaf. Mm -hmm. And we have a fun time gr grinding it. So we have an array of vegetables. So let's start with a red because we... Uh, if I like to, my, the way that I remember what, how the, the colors of a rainbow are Roy G. Biv. So uh, the R is for red. And you can put a lot of vegetable in or you can put a little bit of vegetable in. So let's take about like half of that tomato. So that's gonna be our red. And the next is the O, so we need orange. So I'm gonna stick the carrot in there too. We don't even have to, I'm gonna shred it first. And then the next one will be yellow. So if you wanna start on that, I'm gonna pulse these in. And so I'm going to put just a couple of pieces, I don't even have to put the whole thing in, uh, three pieces of that. Then we need green, you can see it starts to get colorful here. We're going to put just a little bit of the broccoli in. Broccoli is something that hides really well in other dishes, the kids never know. My husband does not eat vegetables and he will eat this meatloaf. Okay, and for our blue and indigo and violet, we're gonna use an eggplant. We could use other things, but sometimes a red onion can count as purple. I'm just gonna take a couple of those pieces and toss that right in there. So this first time I shredded, but I wanna get it really small. So what I'm gonna do is empty this out into a big bowl. Oopsie, whoopsie, I'm making a mess. It's not fun until you make a mess, right? I'm going to empty it all out here into the bowl. Pardon my fingers. And I'm going to put in my chop blade. But the kids love this. They, they get excited about the colors. It's a great way to teach them colors. And I always say let them play with the food. If they're going to play with the food, they're more likely to eat it. Mm -hmm. So I am going to throw all of this back in here. And if I wanted to, I could use some chicken stock to thin this out if my uh, food processor is struggling. 
and I could do all of this, and maybe I only put half of this in the meatloaf if I'm starting my kids out on having vegetables, but I could take the other half and freeze it for the next time I make meatloaf so that I don't have to do the whole thing again. And every once in a while, I need to mush it down. And the fussier your kids are about vegetables, the finer you want to grind this. It's that thing we've, we've heard Dr. Adele Nadowski come in and talk before about getting your kids used to a flavor or used to a texture. Okay. Start fine, work your way up. And again, I could use some chicken broth. I'm not going to. Now, my kid is pretty good about eating vegetables, so this kind of a grain, this is okay. Um, but again, you can turn this totally into a puree. You could even add water to it. And normally when you make a meatloaf, you would add breadcrumbs and eggs. My kid can't have those. So, um, and we do ground turkey. This is where it gets disgusting. Okay. Because <laughs> we're going to start out with a spoon, but we're going to go ahead and put in about half of this and assume that I'm going to freeze the rest of it. But really, at home, I would put this whole thing in. Yeah, do you want to go hands or spoon? I can't, I th go hands. Okay. We're playing with our food, right? You, you, we're playing with the food. And I, Jem loves this part too. You want to make sure your hands are really nice and clean. I'm grabbing my dish here. You would want to add some salt and pepper, or just salt if your kids don't like pepper. But you're going to mix all that stuff in, and they're not even going to know it's there. Honestly, my husband is the biggest baby about vegetables, and he loves this meatloaf. You can decide how thick you want to do it in terms of the pan. I put it in, and I don't use any oil in the pan. It's going to shrink away from the pan. Um, you could put a little oil on it if you wanted to. Uh, towards the end of when it's baking, you could put uh, ketchup on it. Sometimes people mm -hmm. like a spaghetti sauce, something like that, on the top of it. But uh, it's rainbow meatloaf. It's got all those flavors and colors. Can you throw right in there? And you just mush it around <laughs> to the corners. Now we both have disgusting hands. Uh, and this is all that it takes. Then you can put it in the oven sometimes uh, towards the end when it starts to crisp up. Because it's turkey, I like to um, put a lid on it um, so that I can cook it thoroughly, but it doesn't get as crispy on the outside. Really easy to do, but again, salt and pepper. It makes great sandwiches. If you serve that with the mashed potatoes, they get their bellies full and lots of veggies that they don't even know that they've had. So really fun rainbow meatloaf. And last but certainly not least, we wanted to take this opportunity to make a fruit rainbow. This is a really fun project to work on with your kids. We have some a lovely array of fruits uh, in different colors. So. We, what, tell us what we have over here. For our red, we've got strawberries. Orange, we've got oranges. Mm -hmm. For yellow, we just cut up some banana. Awesome. Then we've got some green grapes, some blueberries, and some reddish violet grapes. Great. <laughs> there we go. Uh, all right, so, uh, and we've got a white mat here if you've got a big platter that you can, it's going to go fast, so whatever you're going to make it on, uh, try to think of in terms of an arch, and we're going to put some surprise clouds in at the end. And you can pile it, you can lay it down. Uh, I am a little messier. You're, you're much more Martha Stewart about and systematic about things than I am. So now that we've done our wonderful fruit rainbow, now we can add some surprise happy clouds made out of whipped cream. It's pretty. And then you can set loose a bunch of children on this and they will have a blast. Absolutely. So happy St. Patrick's Day from all of us at Skills Live and the Center for Autism and Related Disorders. See you next time.